chill. And welcome to Bitter Reality Bro. Yes, you heard me. Chill. Not cheers. Meh, cheers too, but chill. It's that time. Yeah. I need to step up to a glycol chiller and I need your help. This video is going to be for several people. First, it's going to be for me. I need your help. If you own a glycol chiller for home brewing, you've used a glycol chiller, you've owned a glycol chiller, your best friend has one and you hang out there and help him with it all the time, or you just know a lot about glycol chillers. I need your help. Leave me a comment below which one I should buy, why I should buy it, yeah, justify it. And keep in mind, I like to experiment, so you may have had to seen some of my previous videos to understand what fits my needs, because what fits one person's needs may not fit another person's needs. And I have one out of this six glycol chillers that we're gonna talk about today that I think works for most home brewers. Most, not all. And then I have a variety of different variations of that. So yeah, for people who don't have a glycol chiller, but have just even a remote possibility of needing a glycol chiller down the road or considering buying one down the road or need justification why not to buy a glycol chiller, this video might be for you. So you might wanna keep watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Come on. Seriously, wait, stop. Why is that still red? Come on, just hit the subscribe. Thank you, appreciate it, definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Cost you nothing, helps me massively. I'm not asking you to hit the stupid bell, just hit the subscribe. Thank you. A like wouldn't be bad either. You know, if you got a question, throw it in the comments. So, first of all, we're gonna take care of the fermentation chambers and get them off the list very quickly. And on the glycol systems, I'll go over the specs we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna go over the brands, and then we'll nail the six and get them done. And which ones were my favorite? I had one that was up here, one here, one here, and now these two are tied and this one is down here. Why? Yeah, why? First of all, I have a Comos kegerator, eight tap kegerator. I have had since Father's Day, pretty much, or just after Father's Day of 2022. And I have been using it as a lager fermentation chamber. I have not used it as a kegerator. It is not set up as a kegerator. This weekend, I'm turning it into a kegerator because, well, things around the house are getting finished and we're gonna start having lots of company over. I have seven taps there, I need four over here, and eventually I'll have the other four full, so I'll have 15 taps. Yeah, and you know, my beer's free. So yeah, <laughs> 15 taps and some of it might not be beer, but the majority, of course, will always be beer. So I need to get moving and start changing the way I do things. First, let's go over fermentation chambers because I think that works a lot for most people. And I have my ale fermentation chamber that I built myself. You've probably seen it in my YouTube video where I did the tour so you can see it. And I've done previous videos showing it off. And that thing does an amazing job, but it can't really go much below 50 degrees Fahrenheit and maintain that temperature. So it works great for ales, not for lagers. So I considered buying another Comos kegerator, but just the fridge part. It's really nice. It's got a stainless steel plate that's put in there to kind of protect the overall fridge. It has a fan, it blows the air really well. It keeps the air pretty consistent throughout. There's not a lot of gradients in there as far as temperature differences. And it's a thousand bucks, it's expensive. It's on wheels. And then you have the wrapped from Keglin, wrapped fermentation chamber. And that thing's amazing. I have a good friend who has one and he brags about it and says that the temperature is very consistent. It doesn't get a lot of gradients because you know, you got heat rises, you know, it was a concern. The thing you don't understand is both of those are around a thousand dollars. Freight. Freight's going to cost you another 200 to 300 dollars to get it delivered. So they're really sitting about 1250. Let's just we'll put it somewhere in the middle, 1250. And they do a great job and you don't end up having to buy this, this, you know, like let's say a Firmzilla example, or if you're over on an anvil, you know, you got the thermal well, you got the chiller, you got, the, you got so many things you have to buy and those add up. Plus you need a pump, you need a temperature controller. A fermentation chamber really is a good deal financially. And yes, I will leave links to everything down below. Some of them affiliate, some not. Feel free to click on them if you're gonna buy something or if you just wanna go shopping, click on them, buy something else. Sometimes I get a little chump change on that too, and I definitely appreciate it, thank you. So, which glycol chillers are we looking at? I'm looking at three Brewbilt, who's Brewbilt? Brewbilt is under more flavor, which is under more beer. It's a family of companies, 
Yeah, some of you out there are going, more beer, Brewvelt, same company? I didn't say that, but they're in the family of companies. I, they're related somehow. I don't know if they're in the same warehouse or where they are, but they're definitely related. So it's a reputable company. Then you have Blickman. We all know who Blickman is. We have Greenfather. Hopefully you know who they are. And we have SS Brutech. I know some may not know who SS Brutech. They've been around for a long time too. They make mm, a lot of bigger systems. They are trying to get into some of the other markets, but yeah, all of them are reputable companies, good systems that have gotten good overall reviews and have been around for a while. So first, we're gonna jump right into the one that I think works for most people. I'm gonna go over the compressor horsepower, the BTU, the wattage, the amount of liquid, how much wattage it uses up to, of course. Things like that, they're important. All those items are very important, more than most people realize. So first we're gonna go into the Brewbuilt Icemaster Max 2 Glycol Chiller. Why do I think that's the best deal for most people? First of all, it's $700. I know, everybody's going, $700, oh my gosh. That's actually the cheapest one on this list. <laughs> so, yeah, I know I just lost a lot of people. Went, I'm out of here. See you later. But $700. It includes the temperature probe. It includes the temperature, kind of like an ink bird, you know. It has a temperature monitor and it has the pump. So it's pretty much got everything except for your coil and anything you need for your fermenter, whether you're using a crucible from Anvil, Blickman, SS Brewtech, or anyone else, or a brew bucket even. Yes, you're still gonna need some sort of a jacket to keep the temperature controlled, to keep it from releasing that cold air or getting warm from outside. You're going to need a coil to pump the liquid through and help cool the wort or future beer. But those are additional expenses that you have to spend, but you're not gonna need a pump. You're not gonna need the temperature controller and you're not gonna need the probe because they come with it. And that right there can cost you 60 to about $200 based on what you're buying. Does not include wheels, it's little like rubber feet. You might be able to put wheels on there, I don't know. But for me, I think that's just a great system for most people. It is 3 eighths horsepower, 500 watts, 1700 BTU, and about four and a half gallons of total liquid. That's water and glycol blended. So it works great. Number two, Brewbuilt Icemaster Max 4. This one was my favorite. Hands down, my favorite once I got off knowing that, you know, two might not work for me. I thought it would. Most people don't have more than one or two things brewing. And, you know, it's 700 bucks, but I'm kind of a good salesman. You know, I go in there, I'm like, hey, I just want the cheap, I just want the cheap one. I just want the cheap one. Oh, for a little more and get more features? Ah, for a little more and get more features? Yeah, I sell myself and I step up all the way to the really nice ones. So I'm like my own worst enemy, but it is what it is. And long term, I would rather spend a little bit more and get something that's going to exceed my needs or at least meet my future needs and not meet my current needs and feel like I should have, you know, two $700 systems because I bought another <laughs> system to do two more later would be a lot more expensive than buying one for maybe a grand. So this one does sell for about a grand. It's three eighths horsepower, 780 watts and 2600 BTU and eight gallons. But it just like the Max 2 has built in pumps, built in temperature controllers, built in probes. So you have everything except for what you need for your fermenter to connect to it. So that's a great deal. And hands down, that one really caught me by surprise with everything that it came with. Comes with wheels and the majority of all of these come with wheels except for the first one I told you, the Max 2. And the wheels are important for me because I like to put anything on wheels so I can start moving this around. So if I have to rearrange this room, I don't need to get like, you know, a bunch of big dudes come help me lift everything or me unstack everything, move it, put it all back together. Yeah, it's not worth my time. So I wish my fridges were on wheels. That would be really nice. But Brewbuilt Ice Master Max 4 Glycol Chiller, hands down one of the best ones out there for the feature set. I haven't used any of these personally, so I can't review any of them for good, bad, and different. But feature-wise, comparing them, that one definitely, definitely ahead of the game. Number three, sticking with Brewbuilt, we have the Brewbuilt Ice Master 100. I didn't quite get this one initially. And I sat there thinking about it and I'm like, I don't really get it. 
because it has pretty much everything the Brewbuilt Icemaster Max 4 has. It's $800. I know you're like, oh, $200 cheaper. But it doesn't have, yeah, it's pretty much almost the same system, except it does not have the temperature controller, does not come with the probes, does not come with the pumps. And I started figuring it out. What it is, is you're spending $100 more than the Max 2 to have the ability to do up to four. You're gonna have to buy the temperature controller, the pump, temperature controller, pump. That'll bring you up to the same price as the Max 4, and you're only doing two, but you can expand to two more. Eh. As I even explain my justification, it doesn't sound like good justification. So, but it allows you to grow. If you wanna save $200 up front, now the key where it does benefit you, and this is why I said some systems are better for other people compared to the Max 2, let's say for some weird reason, you have a bunch of pumps laying around and you have a bunch of Inkbird temperature controllers, this might be for you. I mean, boom, you save $200, you already have all the parts, you throw them in, you start doing your fermentation, you save 200 bucks. So it does fit a niche, it's just a little tighter niche compared to the other ones. Number four, this was my number two compared to the Max 4 from Brewbuilt, but it is pretty much tied to Brewbuilt now, um, not so much for the features, but for the flexibility. Well, I take that back. It has some cool features, but they're kind of techy OCD spec features that I like, but for the flexibility. Yeah, the flexibility. Blickman, glycol chiller. It's about a thousand bucks. It can do up to six fermenters. And that's based on, I say six, that's based on six plugs, electrical plugs that it has in the top piece. And you still have to buy the pumps. You still have to buy the temperature controllers. I know, I, I just went up $200 from Ice Master 100 and the only thing I grabbed was two extra plugs. Well, follow me on this. So I still have to buy the pumps, temperature controllers, the probes. It's 3 8 horsepower. Instead of 780 watts, it's up to 500 watts. So it seems a little more power efficient. And instead of 2600 BTU, it's 3400 BTU. So they're using more efficient technology to get a little bit more out of that power. It's eight gallons for total liquid storage. That's actually kind of cool. So I'm gonna use less power to chill more stuff or chill things better at a lower temperature. That, that appeals to me. I'm a little cheap. I don't like to waste money if I don't have to. I used to drive a car that got 49 miles to a gallon. So I know it wasn't a Prius. I hate Prius. I'm sorry for anybody who owns a Prius, but hey, I drive a Mini Cooper and that's my nemesis. <laughs> it just is. So with the Blickman, here's the key. And this is kind of where I started thinking. I'm in Florida. I don't usually need heat. We have plenty of that. I just need to chill things down. But if I'm doing something like some Norwegian, like yeast, I might need a little heat. Well, instead of using something like Anvil's temperature probe with Anvil's system hooked to the pump, I could use one of my mini ink birds with a temperature probe. And oh, guess what? I can do hot and cold now. So I could hook a heating system up on one, like a heat pad or a heat wrap. And on the other side, I have my chilling. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this now. So I could actually do heating and chilling using the Blickman, or I guess I could also do that with the Brewbuilt Icemaster 100 also. So not having the temperature gauges or temperature systems built in might be a benefit. Now keep in mind, I have seen some things in the forums where people said that they can go in because the ones that are on there are a type of ink bird system and you can go in and modify it. So you can probably add heat if you're really good with wiring or if you just wanna like, you know, put a hole in the side of your other for glycol chiller system. But hey, the flexibility there. And on top of that, the grain, or not the grain father, the Blickman, although it can only do six, I bet I could probably, if I could fit two more pumps in, I could probably go up to eight. I just wouldn't have the plugs conveniently located. So, the flexibility there on the Blickman is much, much higher than the other systems I've talked about. Number five, Grainfather Glycol Chiller. Not even really on my list and I'll explain why. It's $1,150, so $1,150. It does up to four fermenters, but it was designed specifically for Grainfather Conicals. 
Now you can spend 212 into a brew bucket, but yeah. It also only holds 1.5 gallons. It's 300 watts. I don't know what the eight horsepower is or the BTUs, but 1.5 gallons trying to chill a bucket means I'm probably only gonna be chilling that bucket. Once I get the temperature down, if it's not a huge difference from that ambient temperature around it, then it might not be too bad to do additional fermenters. But for me, it's just not on my list. Now, if you happen to own a bunch of Grandfather Conicals, go for it. Perfect, right there for you. Number six, this is the last one, SS Brewtech. SS Brewtech has a system that it's nice, but it's $1,000 and only does up to three systems, doesn't include the pumps, doesn't include the temperature controllers, doesn't include all these other things that you need. So for me, $1,000 to only do three, that really isn't a good value. I'm sorry, SS Brewtech, y'all make some nice stuff, but that item just, you know, and I've heard good things from people who own it. So that's a good thing. The one thing I do like about SS Brewtech is that they have really cool coil systems for their different types of fermenters from like a bucket type system to an actual conical with huge coils. So you just get a lot of liquid going through there so you can really chill things down quickly and then maintain it. And those things are awesome. They also have some quick disconnects for your glycol hoses and stuff, which is really amazing. Very nice. They are, you know, set links, but still, it's very convenient and it's very nice. All of those items are extra, they are expensive. Some of the coils with their little stainless steel lids and everything, because it includes everything pretty much, run from about 190 to I think it was $315 from what I saw on more beer. So, and that's where I was looking at for the pricing. I did look some other places, but that's, they were pretty consistent on pricing. So yeah, and that's uh, one fifth of a horsepower instead of three eighths and it's 1,000, 450 BTU, I don't know what the wattage is, and 4.75, about almost five gallons total liquid, which is nice. So right now, I'm looking for me personally, for you, if you're only doing one or two, the Ice Master 2 or Max 2, I think is just a really good value. If you're like me and you may want to do at least four systems, possibly more down the road, then I'm looking at either the Ice Master Max 4, because I could probably figure something out if I'm doing more than four, to be honest. So the Ice Master Max 4 really does meet my needs. The Blickman system is gonna cost me a little more, but it may help to meet my future needs. So that's where I'm kind of in the balance game. Which one should I buy? Why? Both are reputable companies, both are great companies. It's just a matter of deciding which one I'm gonna spend the money on. Once I get it, of course, I have some equipment now. I'll need to order some more equipment and I'll make sure to put videos out when I get the equipment, unbox it, go through the whole thing, set it up, whichever one I buy, which I'm still looking for your feedback because I haven't purchased it. I'm waiting, I really want that feedback more than you realize. And we'll go on the journey together. Thank you, cheers. Don't forget, like, subscribe. You didn't hit the subscribe, come on. Come on, what are you waiting for? Come on, I appreciate it. Thank you, cheers.